This is Long Way to the Top, and I'm your host, Shane Bryan. In the words of the immortal ACDC, it is harder than it looks. These interviews will give you a glimpse into the lives of the artists that we've sung along with, danced and rocked out to. Some go deep into their past and others celebrate their recent releases. But all of them show that regardless of who you are, it's always a long way to the top. Well, Lucius Boric has been playing music since he was three years old, touring with the Kevin Boric Express, performing with Mark Evans of ACDC and Mick Cox of Rose Tattoo in the Rolling Stones cover band, cleverly named the Rolling Clones, and most most famously establishing himself as one of the founding members of progressive rock band COG. He joins me on this week's episode of Long Way to the Top. Out on the road with the tour already underway. How are you, mate? Not too bad. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, good, good. Now, uh, look, it's been a I, – I actually want to start with with a quote. Uh, it's been a very long, long road for you guys. Um, and the quote is from uh, the song No Other Way. And it says, Fear is the virus they use to divide us, hoping we all just pretend that there's no other way. How important is that for you or for all of us right now? I mean, it's one of those things that never really changes. Yeah, you can look at it on a couple of levels. I think there's a, definitely a, a personal level that you probably go through in your own life and mm. the things that you have to kind of deal with and uh, the certain you know anxieties and fears that you have that creep in. Um, it's probably a good metaphor for your own personal kind of sense of mental self and what's going on and and um, also I think that you know the, the wider kind of worldly media kind of stance that's out there mm. the narrative that's out there um, I think it plays into that as well definitely mm. Mm. and um, yeah it's like a you know I think once you can once you can kind of see certain things, um, especially if there's, you know, if we talk media propaganda and things like that, yeah. um, you can kind of, you know, you can you can go through those fears with less anxiety. Yeah, you know? yeah, uh, less, less, yeah, and then you can feel perhaps a little more secure in your own sense of self. Mm. Um, but it's it's a statement I think within the music that's um. For even for us as a, as a as a band as well, you know, yeah. like um, you know, with what we're doing and 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 how we operate, um, we've been going for like twenty odd years. So, yeah. you know, there's it, it, that yeah, there's that great movie Apocalypto, which which um, Mel Gibson. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, great movie and. There's a line in there, like with it, because it was kind of based on the on the Mayans, I think back in the back in the day, and it was, you know, they were living obviously very tribally, and um, you know, I remember one of the one of the lines was something to do with fear is like a is is like a virus, it's a poison, mm-hmm. you know, that can really, I guess, hold you back. So I mean, you know, you got to pick your battles, of course, to some degree, but um, yeah. But there's definitely something in it, you know. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, uh, like you said, um, talking about the media, uh, there there is a lot, they, it seems to be a lot of the negative uh, that is out there that is actually, uh, I guess, influencing the, the news and influencing how we, how we see uh, things in the world. But taking it to a, to a completely different level, I mean, there is a lot of shit that's actually going on out there as well. Uh, and if we really succumb to that, I mean, it can really do our head in. Yeah, and there's that great Bill Hicks joke, you know, comedian, you know, when he talks about the media and the, the propaganda that gets, mm. um, you know, spilled out through their waves and, you know, war, death, famine, AIDS, death, you know, he goes, it's pretty, it's a great skit. And he kind of repeats the line over and over and over and it's like, like you know, he's getting all anxious and then he goes, well, you just, but when I look outside, everything seems to be fine, and the birds are tweeting, and 
So mm. it's that kind of reflection on the, you know, what's going on around you in your immediate space. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that you can, you know, touch, set, you know, see, smell, you know, taste, the five sensory thing. Uh, you know, if it's all good in that environment to some degree, um, you know, you can you can have less anxiety and, and, you know, not wear the weight of the world on your shoulders, so to speak. You know what I mean? There's that, yeah. there's that fight or flight, you know, reptilian part of our brain, they say, you know, which is the fight or flight, you know, the, mm-hmm. the um, which gets targeted uh, apparently, you know, because yeah. it, it's a very um, well-established document that, um, you know, you can put people in states of fear through that, you know, that very animalistic sense yeah. of part of our brain, you know, the fight or flight, you know. Um, and, yeah, the, the media is very well versed in using that, you know, yeah. in, in, uh, in so many different ways. And, um, you know, a lot of those big corporate media, they've got it down pat and I think they've got very, they're very clever, you know, mm-hmm. whether it be health, whether it be, you know, um, you know, wars, whether it be, you know, other things like that. So, um yeah, we, mm. we, we've got to be very mindful of that and and just know that, you know, if you're in your time and space that you can what you can witness and see and and is around you and your friends, your family and your community are, are, are faring pretty well. Mm. Um, well then, you know, less anxiety, less fear. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to play into it as much, you know. Yeah. And I, I like that. That's a real common theme that that that's sort of gone through uh, you know, the albums that you've created. Uh, let's go back to 20 years ago. Uh, you released New Normal and then after that, Follow Up, which was Sharing Space. And you've actually had a tough time with this. I mean, fast forward 20 years now, you've got both of those albums being re-released on vinyl for the first time and I have to say... I've uh, I've I've got my uh, my sharing space on the way. I can't wait to uh, to put it on the turntable. You you took it, it took you ten years to get that back from the record label. Yeah, fifteen, I think actually. 15. Yeah, but, but, wow. Yeah, yeah. So so a long time, and the the way the contract was um, created and the terms and conditions were created that we have to deliver twenty. I think it was twenty three or twenty four songs. Hmm. And they could be, you know, it could be like multiple EPs or three albums or just yeah. one double album, whatever it was. It was just song based, and I think they they did that based on, you know, they knew the digital kind of world was coming, and and that you know singles were going to be kind of like a thing or whatever. But um, the term of the contract started on the delivery of the very last, you know, song. So the twenty eight songs um, yeah. in full, and that's when the fifteen year period started. We we. You know, we kind of honoured our part in terms of like doing the two albums and a few other little singles or whatever. Mm. And then um, the term started and the, the label was, you know, became quite dysfunctional and an entity that wasn't, from my understanding, um, you know, working in a capacity that was, you know, that was kind of supporting us in some ways. And, you know, they changed ranks in inside the label to a degree with, you know, people who we were working with and they got interchanged out uh, and therefore the relationship kind of wasn't the same and it deteriorated. There wasn't the, the same understanding um, or confidence in, in the thing. And then, but we just pushed on, we moved forward and, you know, we the, both albums did, did pretty, pretty well independently. Mm. And um, I think we got to a stage that um, obviously we had we had a hiatus as well. We've been working, yeah. you know, 13, 14 years straight on the road pretty much. Yeah. Um, so it was time for us to kind of just, you know, take some time, do some other things. Um, obviously, we were becoming family um, people now, you know, which was another dynamic coming yeah. in. Um, so that, 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 was, that was playing into it big as well. So, um, and then, you know, we, we just kind of, when we reconvened and, you know, there was still, I think it was still like another three or maybe four to five years left to basically um, wait it out. Yeah, might have yeah. been four years, yeah. not maybe not quite five. But, um, yeah, so we, we still had to wait it out. And it was still, we were still trying to get information and, and all sorts of things like that. And, you know, it wasn't very forthcoming because the label was pretty, pretty dysfunctional. And um, it was... You know, it was still a registered 
entity, but it mm-hmm. wasn't really a functioning label from what mm-hmm. I understand. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just had to wait it out and, you know, kind of do what we could. Um, we obviously released a few singles on the, on you know, which we recorded and yep. on our own kind of merit and our own label and with our own resources. Yeah. And that was pretty good and everything was um, everything was going pretty smoothly and we wanted to release some more songs. Um, we went overseas. We did a, a kind of tour over in Europe, which was great. First time we'd gone over there and done like a you know, three, four-week tour, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we came, kind of came back with plans to do some more stuff and then kind of COVID hit, the, you know, yeah. the world. So The world that, stopped. That, the world kind of, yeah, stopped. Yeah. Uh, for, for longer than two weeks to flatten the curve. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long two weeks. <laughs> it, was a, it was a very long two weeks. Yeah, that's, that's right. So, um, so yeah, we've been, you know, um, since then we're just kind of, I guess, just, you know, the kind of fallout from COVID, so to speak, at the moment, what are we, you know, three and a half years after. So, um, you know, everyone's trying to juggle what they've got and, you know, yeah. Um, you know, we had floods as well. We had certain yeah. things like that that was coming on through that time. That was that was quite full on. We couldn't play much because obviously we were we were a band that wasn't going to compromise. You know, um, the way we we, we yeah. felt about you know, I guess the implementation of um, mandates and all sorts of things like that. And we had our own reasons for that. So um, yeah, we weren't we weren't really going to. Um, we're just going to have to kind of sit tight, you know, yeah, and, and yeah. kind of wait things out like a lot of people like do. Like a lot of people and, do, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but like, you know, on the other side of that, like January last year um, was when we finally got the masters back and the rights mm. back. Mm. And it was kind of, you know, that felt really, really, really good mm. um, to kind of like, okay, cool. We've, we've got that, um, you know, that catalog and, you know, we can do what we want with it. And we always wanted to do vinyl. Yeah, we always wanted to do something like that, and the timing now was was definitely right, and the and the pieces were were there on the table, and you know could be coordinated and put together, and mm. um, took a little while to get it going. I mean, we had a had a bit of a rough trot when we got it organised. Um, Doug from Rare Records in Melbourne, he's got a shop there, and um, you know he's like a very novice um, a vinyl guru, if you will. He's got mm. a shop that's like that, and he knows you know ins and outs of all that stuff. That's his world. Mm. Uh, and it was you know after we got, I got I did the mastering with with Tony, um, and then we said we all got sent off to Czech Republic because we had to kind of find all the parts and all the yeah. bits and pieces and put it all together, which is quite a quite a task. I uh, went over to Czech Republic to get um, to get put together, and they had a lot of trouble over there. And I think. The, the state of just the economy and you know post COVID and mm-hmm. things like that had a, had a bit of an effect on on the, um, uh, the the plant over there and there were some other issues from, from what I understand so it wasn't the timing was really you know moving quite fast and we weren't hitting the deadlines and we had to pull it all back basically to to Sydney to to Australia yeah um, and kind of like you know. I guess Doug was in a quite a compromising position, you know, like trying to just meet because we already did pre-sales and stuff like that, mm. and it just wasn't kind of hitting the hitting the target. Unfortunately, people were getting a bit upset. But you know, hey, it's like it's amazing any any of it works at all, you know, to some degree. You know, it's like a a, a big task to, to yeah. do it. But we finally got it done. You know, as of last week, they were getting yeah. pressed and they just made it in time. For the first show in Melbourne yeah. that we that we just did, so we were pretty pretty chuffed about that, and and um, I, when I was you know holding them in my hand for the mm. first time, I was like, wow, these things have got some weight to them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, a hundred and eighty gram for <laughs> for each it, record, yeah. like, and there's ooh. three records because you've split it uh, over over three records. I really love that you haven't sort of skimped on the design of it as well. I mean, you've gone with with three different options for each record. Uh, you know, five hundred minimum uh, the the maximum that's being created for each record. They are, they you've basically gone. These are not just going to be black vinyls. Here you go, mass production. These are collectors' albums right from the start. Yeah, a bit like Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. A bit, like, a, bit like, a bit like crypto. We're starting the new vinyl version of crypto. What a great who idea! Knows, <laughs> who knows what? Who knows what it'll be worth? You know, in 
30, 40 years' time when all music's, you know, relatively censored. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to go back to, to that. Uh, I want to go back to that where you've, you, you know, you, your themes within your albums have been, you know, new world globalisation, government corruption, control, you know, just your average everyday themes that, that go into <laughs> albums. I, I, I find that there's a lot of, um, a lot of bands like yourself, uh, like Dead Letter Circus, like Tool, like you, you, it seems to be a common theme within the bands. Uh, and is it the progressive rock, you know, um, vibe that, that allows you to, to do that? I mean, because your, your, your songs can be as long as you want them to be, basically. So you can tell more of a story than you would in a normal three and a half minute song. <laughs> Yeah, the music for us always seems to come first um, mm. and the lyrics seem to come afterwards. We'll, we'll usually give the, you know, a working title to the songs. I think yeah. the, I mean, just just cog in the sense of a narrative or having something to say or something to sing about mm. um, before, even before, you know, Cog, Flynn and I were very, we were in a band called The Hanging Tree and that was a, you know, we, the, the band was quite a political-driven narrative band, mm. so to speak, you know, like coming off the back of, you know, bands like Midnight Oil or, or, or Pink Floyd or any of those type of bands that were um, just seeing the world, seeing the injustice, seeing the, you know, degradation of, of rights and obviously seeing the political um, piggery that goes on there and yeah. the, the, the corruption that goes on there. And, you know, I, th I think we, we, we kind of... Um, we got interested in just wanting to know how the, the world worked to mm. some degree. And then um, obviously, you know, we dug down deep in many different type of rabbit holes to understand, well, what, what's actually really going on here and how does this yeah. actually work? And, you know, what's the head of the snake and, um, you know, what can we do about it? Is there anything we can do about it? You know, like, and, mm. you know, all those kind of things got put into the songs, <clears throat> which I think are a true reflection of, of, you know, being human and, and yeah. having the, experience with a system that we're all kind of entangled in um and the and the uh the, you know the narratives that we were we were basically singing about yeah. um and the ideas that we were came up came, came up with were, you know that it was good to have something to sing about on that level you know yeah. and and um you know obviously being concerning with looking at the world and you were talking about the media before and all that type of stuff so there's a there is a a, a response you know, I, I, I guess a call and response thing that seems to happen when, you know, you're looking at the world, you're reading books, you're analysing, you know, and then you want to kind of have something to say about it. Do you feel um, as a musician that you you have a responsibility? No, not really. No, mm. I don't. I don't think. I mean, arts, and you know, I just think as a, it depends on consciously what you're trying to what you're trying to, to um, bring forth in your own life as, mm. as, as something that's true and a reflection that, you know, is, is around you. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's, it's you know, people sing songs, in, you know, with different themes and different narratives mm. and, you know, different concepts for different reasons. Yes. Um, and I, I wouldn't say there's a, there is, there's a responsibility to, to some degree, but um, it definitely gives you something to be able to, to sing about. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I think you need subject matter if you're going to have you know subject matter in a song. Um, you know, there's those close themes that we all seem to have. You know, love is a big one. You know, yeah. everyone has relation relationships. Um, you know, and I guess you could say getting caught up in the the system or the way the system mm -hmm. works, and um, that's also another one. You know, yeah. even. You know, cars are another one. Yeah. <laughs> where, where did the they name wrote a lot Cog... of songs about cars. <laughs> there is a lot of songs about cars. Where did the name Cog come from? Uh, I, when I was living in LA and I moved there for a while, I was kind of, you know, I guess you could say um, compressed to, to a lot of the degree touring Australia over, the, you know, what was it, like 10 odd years or something. I was still relatively young, but... Um, I went to went to America, went to LA, lived there, wanted to start a band. Um, that was the germination of Cog mm. um, from from you know myself. Uh, and I looked for, I think it was to, to set that kind of um, 
kind of like manifesting or just having a name or having a, a brand or something that you were going to be able to work with. You know, I guess it's like having a canvas and then, you know, the, the notes and the, the, the songs and everything become the paints or whatever you want to yeah. call it. But just in a, in a way, it felt good to have a, have a name, you know, that, that kind of, you know, even without having the players, you know, even without really knowing what the music was, was going to be. Um, so I looked through the dictionary and I thought, well, there's a lot of words in there. There's got to be something in there. <laughs> uh, and I came across that word. I liked, I liked the, um, the description more than the actual name. But securing constant variation within the engaged. So mm. there's always, you know, having many parts to make something work. Mm. Uh, I think um, it also, you know, when I when I said asked Lynn what he thought of it, you know, when we were kind of coming back together and back in the back in the early stages, and he really liked it. He thought it was really really good, and and I was a bit in two minds. But he he's a graphic designer too. He was studying graphic design, so he knew yeah. it would look great on a poster, you know, and and all that type of stuff, and it was be bold and and you know all that type of stuff. So, and there's also that connotation that you know, it's 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 the it's the the it's kind of like the middle class of, of society that keeps the world functioning and keeps yeah. the ideas going and keeps, you know, things, I guess, having somewhat of a, a civilised society. It's that real backbone of, of, yes. of society, the cogs of, of all of us. So we're all kind of cogs, you know, like uh, infused in each other and, 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 you know, this constant variation within the engaged. Yes. And um, so it, it seemed to, you know, it seemed to speak a lot, a lot to that. And, um, yeah, I, thought I, he, I came round to it after after a while, once, especially once he got the font right too, you know. Yeah, it looks sensational. Once, yeah, yeah, once he was able to, because it's quite a hard word to actually, you know, yeah. when you, to, to actually make look good, you know. It's, a, yeah. it's quite a, but he, you know, he's, he's really artistic in that nature and, and, and did really well. And I was like, yeah, that's really, I like it now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. And, and yeah. also, you know, on Sharing Space, you, you kind of came full circle uh, with the song The Movie's Over. And you've got that, you know, incredible speech by uh, Mario Savio, uh, which is mm. the bodies upon the gears. You know, you you, mm. you can't even passively take part. You've got to put your bodies on the gears, upon the wheels, mm. upon the levers. And that when I when I heard that, it was just like, yeah, that's what Cog's all about. It's about not just being. I mean, you can't you can't not be part of it. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, if everyone's got a a a um. You know they're paying their taxes. They're on the citizenship. You know they're part of this this so called system. Um, you know there has to be, and if it's collective, um, and we kind of want it to be collective mm. to some degree, um, you know there's there's got to be an interest there. And I think that if there's got to be, you know, people have to partake and, yeah. and and have an interest because, you know, obviously, if people get distracted, they're not interested. Well, then there's other people at the helm of the ship. And, you know, you can have maniacs at the helm of the ship and that's basically where we're at at the moment. You know, we're, we're yeah. on these ships of maritime and, you know, there's these, these crooked, you yeah. know, <laughs> pirate going, <laughs> you know, captain <laughs> off their head on whatever else and, yeah. you know, and, and they're steering us into, you know, a, an unbelievably crazy storm, you know. Yeah. I mean, life's always been crazy. There's the politics has always been crazy, you know, generation after generation, you know, societies and I guess um, um, have always, you know, crashed and burned and built yeah. back up and, you know, yeah. hopefully you learn from this, your mistakes. But there's there's always an ongoing kind of um, rhetoric that seems to, to flow where, you know, yeah. the common people, you know, the middle class, the common people that are always getting smashed and they're always getting marginalised and they're always, you know, getting... Uh, you're taken advantage of energetically, you know, through their toil, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. as as you know, it's we can really make it stop if we yeah. do. I mean, just check out the farmers and, and what's happening in Europe at the moment, which is getting no real airtime coverage at all on the mainstream media. Uh, and these, you know, these farmers over, over, and this is just the start. You know, it's going to happen everywhere, I think. But um, you know, they're they're like the backbone of any country, the farmers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and if they're having a if they're having a real legitimate um you know concern and and you know driving to to parliaments and you know taking besser bricks and you know mm -hmm. 
building walls and, you know, and getting shit and, and dumping it on mm. parliaments and getting hay bales and blocking highways. And, and you know, these farmers are pretty relatively peaceful people mm. who, mm. you know, who have generationally worked very, very hard and are now really, really pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, something's coming. You, you know, know so, something, yeah, exactly. You know, something's yeah. coming. Yeah. 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 Now I, I want to go back to uh, your back to, back into your past. Uh, what was your inspiration for starting the you know your music? Where did where did what what inspired you to pick up the the drums? Well, that's such an early part of my life that I actually can't really remember. Um, yeah, right. I've got photos. Uh, I've got photos, and I've seen photos. Um, apparently, there was like a cassette tape. Um, I could, you know, they had me playing four four time at three years of age. Yeah. Um, my environment was musically driven. Um, my, yes. my parents, had, you know, were, were well. My father was is a musician. Yeah. Uh, my uncle's was a mu- He's deceased now, um, but he's he was a musician too. Lots of you know musical people around, and music was was kind of everywhere. So I guess you know it was a natural flow on to some degree of that environment and um, drums were kind of like, you know, kind of easy to some degree because you can just pick stuff up and start bashing and then all of a sudden <laughs> it's making a sound and it's it's not 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 too hard, you know. Um, but, yeah, I guess I, guess I can't – it's a hard question to answer yeah. that one and I have had it before. Um, I think it chose, you know, did it choose me or did I choose it? You know, you kind mm. of go down that road. Um, it feels like it chose me. Mm. Um mm. Because it was, it was just a constant, such a constant in my life. And maybe I was very open to it as a young child, and and I really just um, had the ability to to resonate with it and 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 join with it on, on its frequency, I guess. And and you know, from then on, it was like, well, this is what you're going to do with the rest of yeah. your life, you know. Yeah. And there was never a question about it, never a question in my mind, like, oh, what else am I going to do? You know, what am I going to be? You know, what should I kind of strive for? It was just the compass was set and yeah. and it was – and to some degree, you know, that can be, you know, kind of daunting. Um, but at the same token, it, it felt like the path was somewhat laid out and um, I've never really deviated yeah. from it. And I just, you know, kind of like was a very um, – you know, listening was it was yeah. obviously a big thing, and you know, obviously with with watching television and things like that, you know, music that was going on, I was very interested. My father sometimes I'd go and tour with him, yeah, um, and you know, watch bands and watch how it all worked, and obviously very interested in the drummers that were playing. Um, so yeah, you know, just just it was just music, 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 and that also tagged along with fun, fun, fun. You know, yeah. it seemed to be a lot of fun. You know, yeah. and people were enjoying themselves. So I think I was I was able to pick up on that. You know, that kind of thing. That you know, I think, hey, well, this is a this is a pretty cool place to to kind of you know to get creative and and have yeah. fun with. And um, now and you- drums were the drums seem powerful too. There's something about drums that seem very quite powerful. Yeah, um, which I like the power of that. It's, it seemed yes. to you could you could be heard. You yeah. know, if you got something to say, it was like. People take notice. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. And and I know you said you didn't deviate. You did deviate once. I believe that you were in an episode of a comedy drama TV series called Willing and Able. Yeah, well, that was something that happened when I was around 13 or 14. Uh, I mentioned my, my uncle was a Doug Parkinson singer, yeah, great singer, soul singer, one of Australia's biggest soul singers. Um yes. And he was, he wrote, I think he helped write the theme song for a television show, which you mentioned, yes. The Willing and Able. And they would, but they'd been trying to find someone to play the part of like a street kid. And they couldn't, they auditioned like 5,000 people or girls and boys. Yeah. They couldn't find anyone. And he, you know, they were mentioning it to him. And he said, Well, my nephew is a bit of a, bit of a, you know, character. Yeah. Why don't you audition him? And, and, you, and um, you took the part of Parramatta Jones. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I went along, and I and I just thought it was a joke, you know, because yeah, there, yeah. there was a there was a couple of things that, you know, I, I I was like, well, I've never done this before. I don't know, you know, I'll just muck around <laughs> and you know read some lines and and whatever. And and I actually got the part. I couldn't believe. Yeah. It. And when I got the part, I was mortified. 
I, did, yeah. I didn't want the part. I didn't <laughs> want to do that. I had, you know, and there was a couple of reasons for that. One was because I was a shocking speller and reader. Yeah. And, you know, to memorize lines and, you know, so I was really thrown in the deep end of like, now you're really going to have to learn <laughs> English. <laughs> you know, all those years where it was like, I'm learning drums, not English. I'm learning <laughs> rhythm and beats. I don't want to learn spelling or anything like that. I'm picking up sound over here. That's my thing. Yeah. Um, so I was definitely come face to face with that. And um, I think I I must have um, I got talked into to doing it by my by my parents. Um, and Lou, it'll be great. You'll have fun. And it was basically something that went on for like a year. It was like I think wow. there was, was like, you know, it was a week episode. You know, there was an episode every week for a year on Channel 9, mainstream, you know, Channel 7, I think it was. Yeah. Channel, no, sorry, Channel 9, 7 p.m. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I um, I played the part of the street kid, and and it was it was ended up being quite good. Obviously, the yeah. the money when that started to roll in, and it was, I was you know for a 13, 14 year old, I think I was getting like eight hundred a week wow. back then, which was yeah. which was pretty pretty good. So you know, all my friends had you know skateboards and shoes, and you know we'd go and get fish and chips all the time, and you know I bought myself some surfboards, and I bought myself a drum kit, and. Nice. You know, and and um, it, uh, yeah, it was it was it was a good time, and there was some great aspects to it, and and you know, met some good people, and yes. just, you know, to have that have that documented, uh, it's pretty funny to look back at yourself, you know, and 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 see that, and you know, especially show my boys now, you know, they yeah. think it's pretty pretty funny, but um, yeah, that was a That's deviation, amazing. and and yeah. and, um, and they wrote a couple of episodes um, because I could play drums, and I remember actually the first time recording in a studio was due to that. Um, that show because right. they they wanted me to the as the street kid you know like they created an episode where I got up on stage in the episode and started playing drums or something so I had to actually go into a studio for the first time and record drums which was yeah. awesome and I got to I took my drum kit in and you know they set it up and they recorded it and um, you know only went for like a minute and a half or something like that really yeah. quick but. It was it was a real blast to actually record drums in a studio for the first time, yeah. and then I had to yeah. mime it within the show. So, um, yeah, so that was a bit bit of a deviation there. You know, I'm going to have yeah. to go and 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 see if I can find this on YouTube, right? I think there's a couple of episodes, but I don't think that one's there. Like, there's it's yeah, because it was it was done on film. Like most yeah. stuff has been done on um, video. Yeah, is it video? Is it re- yeah? Obviously, probably VHS uh, somewhere. Yeah, VH, yeah, VHS. Like, like you know, Neighbours and, and Prisoner and and all that. You know, Country Practice and all those kind of shows. Um, but this show, Willing and Able, was the first one that was done on film. Right. So it had a different wow. texture, and apparently that one of that was one of the reasons why it failed was because because it had a lot of really great actors that you know went on to do a lot of great things yes. in the show, but um, I think just p- people weren't ready for possibly the that's what I remember being told as the reason why it didn't continue on to do another year. Yes. Um, funnily enough, I actually got the got the the part for um for, for the home and away, and, and <laughs> I could have gone I could have gone down that avenue. Turn that right down. And, a completely uh, different yeah. road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no. no. Now, uh, I'm going to uh, have a chat about the uh, the tour in a second. Uh, I would love to know. Uh, I always ask this uh, of anyone I'm speaking with. What are you listening to now that's uh, inspiring you? Musically, mm. um, well, I work with a lot of bands because I have a I have a recording studio, yep. Key Sound Studios in Byron, so. I, you know, produce and mix and 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 uh, spend a lot of time with different bands, you know. Yeah. So I'm always listening to a lot of, you know, local music, I guess Australian music. Yes. Um, and not really listening to, you know, much of the latest what's kind of coming out because I'm always just listening to other music in the studio. Yeah. So, you know, when I've got some downtime, I don't really want to listen to music No, that much. no, no, exactly. Uh, yeah, but... Um, yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing that I've kind of really come across. Let's just say um, that's been released um, lately that I've I've kind of connected with, um, other than just a lot of the bands that I've been yeah. kind of working with. So, yeah, nothing really on the table. And there, we can really. we can we can find out what bands they are if we go to your uh, Keystone Studios website. Key, key sound, yeah, key, key sound. sound. Key sounds, sounds yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. yeah. There's a, I've got a, I've got a Spotify playlist actually, which has oh, got great. a lot of the, a lot of the artists on there that I've, I've kind of worked with and produced, and um, 
yeah, there's, you know, a lot of great songs, a lot of really great talent, really, you know, um, you know, some of the bands are still going, some of them are unfortunately not going anymore, but, um, mm. you know, yeah, re- re- I made that playlist because I, I, you know, I really value what these musicians yeah. and, you know, artists have created. Um, and, um, you know, and I've been a part of it as well. And yeah. there's, there's some really good songs, you know, really great songwriting. Well, I'll put the link uh, to that up on the uh, description uh, so uh, so anyone can can check it out. Uh, now, you are currently in the middle of the tour. Uh, you you said uh, the weekend was the first first uh, ones, Adelaide and Melbourne. Was that right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you heading to next? Uh, this weekend's Brisbane, yeah. and then we head to next day we fly to Newcastle. So it'll be yeah. um, kind of, you know, finish up Brisbane that night, get up early, go to fly to Newcastle, yep. do the show, and then fly back the next day. It's basically just two shows, um, so a very small tour, really. Yes. Um, but it feels like a big tour, which yep. is weird because, you know, we actually, this is obviously post-COVID, we haven't done any touring since, it, well, since we came back from Europe, you know, yep. so that's four yep. years ago. We've done, and this is our own tour. So, I mean, we did the Monolith Tour with Carnival yep. um, and all those great bands on the, on there. Um, which that was, I think that was a five day tour. Uh, and when we've done just spot festival shows, mm. um, but we haven't actually done our own tour, um, mm. for yeah, like up four odd years. So it's even though there's only six shows, it still feels like quite a, quite a big tour. <laughs> <laughs> Any plans for uh, uh, for Tassie? Love to love to come to Tassie, love yeah. to go to WA too, you know. And there's there's obviously regional stuff we'd like to yeah. to do as well. The, the the touring circuit has changed, the the price of things has changed, yeah. you know, having the uh, ability to pay and fund for things mm-hmm. um, has changed. Um, you know, we recently did put our ticket price up, which is the first time in, in a long, 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 long time, mm. um, just to try and cover the costs and, and you know, yeah. um, and we really would like to get to those places, and it's just a matter of coordinating it, timing it right. Um, obviously, we've all got businesses and families as well, other yeah. other things going on, um, and you know, try and yeah, like you know, there's definitely some, that some places on this tour that aren't listed yet, yep. um, and we'll probably you know there'll probably be a, a, a back end of the tour which yeah, we'll, nice. we'll, we'll definitely get to you guys and. And hopefully WA as well, and a few other places if we can, you know, if it's vi- if it, if it's oh, viable. Yeah, definitely. Well, well, when you do, uh, we will be here. We'll be there. There'll be a lot of people interested in uh, in in heading to see you. Definitely down here. There's a, a nice strong, um, you know, following of of you know progressive rock in in Tassie. Good. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, it just had butterfly effect come through, which was sensational. So. Oh, they got there, did they? they oh, did. that's they great. Did. Yeah. Awesome. Hobart. Yeah, yeah, Hobart. yeah. I saw some um, saw some things about that tour, and it looked like it was very successful for yeah. them. So that's great. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. All right. Well, uh, I am going to let you go. My my dogs just decided to go completely nuts in the background there. Oh. Um, What's um, his name? Uh, her name. She. Her name's Pepper. Oh, She's a pug. And uh, she's decided oh, okay. that's awesome. it. <laughs> so she's yeah, like, end enough. of the interview. You're finished now. Um, Don't get her a bone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, pop up the on the details of on the uh, on the uh, description the details of where you can purchase the uh, albums. There's still some left at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yep. was, yeah. On this run, there's there's still some left. Yeah, yep, with the, with the variants. Yeah, yeah. Because we probably will, you know, because it costs quite a lot to do. To do all that stuff, so they probably will do a, you know, obviously just about black vinyl. Yeah, but you know, these ones have been a special kind of thing, and yeah. you know, we've we've really tried to make it as, um, I guess, you know, um, artistically uh, representation of of you know, amalgamation of the music and yeah. just the lyrics and the, you know, yeah. it's fantastic when you see it in the flesh. It's like oh, wow, I you can't know, wait. You're, CD, I was like, look good there, but. Um, but yeah, on an album, it just yeah, it throws you back to those times when you used to open up like, Houses of the yeah. Holy or you know or, or the Pink Floyd albums or anything like that. You oh. know, it's like wow, this, this is pretty cool. Yeah, I know. I'm looking at all the different variants, going maybe I can buy and the other two as well. You know, <laughs> like you said, it could be the next big. See how one. you go. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there uh, you go. Oh, look, Lucia Sporich, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Really appreciate uh, your time and, um, yeah, good luck on the tour. I hope it, uh, hope it goes well. 
Thanks, mate. Yeah, all the best. And cheers. For, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Hit plus or follow to subscribe to the podcast and head over to Facebook at The Long Way to the Top Podcast and give us a like. Keep on rocking and I'll catch you on the next episode of Long Way to the Top. Long Way to the Top.